Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Hey, everybody, welcome to a special edition of Greener Data here on Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Okataya, founder and CEO of JSA, and along with my fabulous co host, top B2B social influencer, Mr. Evan Christel. Hey, Evan. Hey, Jamie. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Data Movers, where we sit down with the most influential men and women in today's data center and network technology space, supporting the infrastructure requirements of this modern world. And uh, Jamie, uh, good to see you. I was in your neck of the woods, Southern California, last week. Have you have you filled up your tank lately, by any chance? No, I'm an electrical car gal, uh, which kind of talks to my new uh, greener everything world uh, lately. Um, but I did drive by and saw six dollars on the sign. Six. Yeah, coming to a gas station in the U.S. near you, six seven dollar gas. Which really, to me, highlights the importance of diversifying our energy supplies beyond gas and oil to our, you know, sustainable fuels. And I know you're really excited about that, even more than I am, right? <laughs> well, you know, the goal is to get everybody excited about our movement. Hashtag greener data. Um, we are actually about to launch a book, uh, a multi-author book on Amazon on April 22nd, Earth Day. A very aggressive timeline, um, but uh, as you may have remembered, uh, back in November, uh, we put out a call for authors to contribute, um, and we have been so blessed to have um, such wonderful industry influencers and thought leaders to come together, answer that call, craft incredible chapters. Um, so now we're just binding it and setting it up for press, basically. And uh, and that actually includes one of my dear friends um, and industry noted, noted uh, thought leader, um, Mr. Philip Marangella, CMO of Edge Connects, who we have with us today. Hey, Philip. Hey, Jamie. Good to see you again. Uh, don't know about thought leader, but definitely a friend of yours. And and uh, and like you, being green is is certainly a passion. Uh, for myself and and for Edge Connects as well. Uh, Welcome, we, Philip. Well, uh, yeah, Jamie, you want to get on with the first question? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this has been um, such a, a wonderful tour de force to to work with you um, on many initiatives, but particularly greener data. Thank you again, Philip, for all that you do uh, and and Edge Connects. Um, and maybe that's where we start. Let's give us a little, for our viewers who don't know already, and I hope they do, um, but give us a little bit of Edge Connects background. And uh, uh, recently uh, you spoke on topics at PTC that I think our, our industry should uh, should know and love. Yeah, well, missed you in Hawaii. Uh, you, usually, you know, expect to usually see you there and have those interviews and sunglasses. But, uh, that, and funny enough, I mean, that was the first trip in like two years. Uh, uh, so that was a bit odd to do a business trip and 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 see folks not as crowded as usual, um, but but slowly but surely kind of getting back into the into the groove and, and mix with, with things. Um, but yeah, had the pleasure of speaking with Barb out there. Um, you know, in spite of the 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 pandemic and and you know all the stuff that's going on in the world, certainly for us and I think the data center general in general, um, it's booming right now, right? And and you know especially internationally. Uh, last year, you know, we expanded into India and we did a formed a joint venture with uh, Adani Connects. And, you know, one of the big reasons why we partnered with Adani is, you know, they're the largest renewable energy um, uh, provider in the country. Right. And so that will help um, kind of power our facilities over there um, with, you know, direct green energy, renewable solar, wind and, and, and so forth. Um, you know, at, towards the end of the year, we we um, um, did a investment in Chiora, so we entered the Chinese market, data center market, right? So, bookends of two massive markets, massive countries, massive opportunities, and then in between, you know, you throw in adding Barcelona and Brussels and and Tel Aviv, and and you know, through whether it's organic or inorganic move, so definite global kind of the global edge. Um, it's not really the edge because a lot of that that growth is 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 massive, right? To support cloud, to support content. Now you're seeing the metaverse, 
all this stuff. So hyper growth overall uh, for us. And, you know, this, the start of this year is, you know, continuing that theme of uh, continued market and uh, uh, expansion. So busy times, but, but, you know, again, knock on wood, very fortunate to, to be in the, the industry that we're in right now. Wow. Congratulations on all the success and on focusing on those emerging markets where you can even have a bigger impact than developed markets like ours. So it seems your mantra is customers, people, and planet, you know, uh, not just focus on the customer, but are, are preserving our planet for future generations. Tell us how you, you look at the impact of Edge Connects on, uh, you know, your, your core mission there of sustainability and greener data centers. And, you know, what, what do you see as the ultimate impact and what are the economics like? Lots to unpack there, but uh, give yeah. us a, a peek behind the curtain. Yeah, good, you know, good question, Evan. I mean, look, you know, I kind of look at the, the the print, the Japanese print behind you of that that tidal wave, that tsunami of, of data, right? And, and, you know, when I talk about India or China or other markets around the world, it's about our customers and helping them scale up, scale out in, in a, um, you know, sustainable manner, right? And so it's very much a collaborative effort of determining where and how and when and so forth um, that, that, you know, it's not rocket science in terms of listening to the customer, right? Don't make them come to you. We go where they need to go to better serve their customers. Um, and, and then, you know, you, you hire the best people and you make sure those people take care of the customers as best they can. And then, you know, like I said, you do it in a sustainable way. So very kind of, you know, it's, it's a simple kind of um, uh, three word mantra, but if you focus and execute on that, you know, our CEO is, is the rest should take care of itself. But, you know, um, you know, for us, the sustainability component to that um, the planet aspect and why, you know, we're talking today and why, you know, um, Jamie is, is, is doing this fantastic effort with, with her um, book that so many um, people have contributed to. It's becoming table stakes for us, right, in the data center industry. And, and you know, we obviously consume a lot of power, but at the same time, we, we are trying to be as efficient as, as we possibly can. And that's one thing is that there's no competition when it comes to the planet, right? And so we're all, you know, what's what's great about that is we're all collaborative. We're very open and sharing in terms of innovation and technologies and concepts and ideas of how we can be collectively as an industry more green. Um, and, and, you know, that's what's fantastic, right? And, you know, whether it's the hyperscalers, whether, and it's everybody in the supply chain, right? So the hyperscalers, providers like ourselves, suppliers of the technology and the infrastructure that goes into the data center and, and end users. And we're all trying to become greener and more efficient. And, and that's been the, the fun part is, you know, we don't have these silos as much anymore. There, when, when you're talking about common solutions to, to um, carbon reduction or water reduction or, or waste reduction, um, you know, that's, that's awesome to, to work with um, all the great people in the industry, the smart people in the industry to just solve for some of these, you know, green data center uh, requirements and challenges around the world. And, you know, when I, I'm, I'm so proud and so excited about launching this book with you um, uh, again, April 22nd, Earth Day, we have uh, 24 authors who are contributing a total of 20 chapters. So uh, unbelievable, uh, uh, unbelievable accomplishment. Yeah. And, um, but your chapter really did stand out to me. Um, and I just loved um, your heart that you put into your, your, your chapter. I appreciate you. I also loved the perspective that you gave us from a, a real, you know, global. We, we got folks who are hyper local on what they were doing in their neck of the woods um, uh, and addressing uh, greener data. But uh, you were a really wonderful chapter where you could stand back looking at all your assets spanning the, the, the earth um, and, and really start to uh, talk a little bit broadly about, you know, how to leverage um, existing um, governments and regulations and, and um, to get the most out of, out of each of those facilities. 
I don't know if I'm doing it justice, but would you want to give us a little, a little preview of that? Yeah, no, I mean, um, you know, on that point, Jamie, you know, I, I, I touched on India, right? And, and the lessons we're learning in India, we're trying to apply across the global platform, right? In terms of the, the, the energy that we're, you know, uh, directly, um, um, creating to power these facilities, right? And, and, trying to create these partnerships between, you know, um, renewable energy companies in terms of the source of power and, and, and then obviously, you know, data center providers like ourselves. Um, and it's also holistic, right? It's carbon gets the big component of, of the visibility of the discussion, but it's thinking about all aspects, right? It's water, it's waste, it's, it's you know, and, and it's, land and how we give, you know, it's not even being carbon neutral, it's being carbon negative, right? And so, um, you know, you, and, and then, you know, you factor in some of the, um, the uh, social components and the people components around diversity and inclusion. So, um, you, and then you're being transparent with that. You set high goals and, and, and you share publicly with, you know, how are you doing with these objectives? You see the hyperscalers talking about their goals by 2030 or, you know, 2040 or whatever. And we're all trying to do that. And it goes to my point. We're all trying to have aggressive goals and self-regulate ourselves and collaborate together to achieve these common goals for, for the planet. Right. So, um, and, and so that's the beauty of it. And again, it, emblematic of your book where you have 20 plus authors coming together with the common kind of grand, uh, uh, vision and the grand kind of uh, goals and objectives, but each taking it in their own different way and perspective, right? Whether it's global, whether it's micro, micro on the macro level or the micro level, it's all goodness, right? And we can all learn and apply the big stuff to the little and vice versa. And so that's, that's what's exciting about the, the, the whole endeavor. Yeah, it's amazing to see. And the our industry as a whole is moving slowly towards a more sustainable future but in my humble opinion some of that is kind of marketing hype or greenwashing as it's called but you really are you know walking the walk and not just talking the talk what, what do you think how can our industry create a more global comprehensive sustainability strat strategy beyond the the marketing um I don't know how to take that, Evan, as, as a chief marketing officer. Uh, no. <laughs> um, no, look, I, I, again, it's, it's, you know, there's organizations, right? There's in Europe, you have the climate neutral data center pact, right? Um, you have the infrastructure masons, right? And, and um, you have the efforts that Jamie's doing and, 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 and so forth that, um, you know, on the one hand, there's a lot of educational uh, uh, component, right? And and I think that's been, you know, you, you can say it's it's greenwashing and so forth. But in all honesty, I do feel that the data center industry has been very proactive in trying to become as green as they can, right? There's obviously the goodness for the planet, but there's also economic benefits and social benefits and all that kind of stuff. So, but what you find is there's a lot of regulatory um, kind of pushback, right? Even in Loudoun County, where I live, right? Where there's just, I mean, we're the mecca of data centers. You're starting mm. to finally see some pushback on, well, how many more data centers are there going to be? All right. And, um, you know, but it comes to the education of, of folks on, look, during the pandemic, we business carried on as it was, right? Because we continue to be able to communicate and work over Zoom and Teams and all these kind of things. We continue to exercise remotely through Peloton and our kids didn't lose their minds and could game and go to school and we could still stream and all this kind of stuff, right? Pull the plug on the data center and we would have a whole different kind of discussion. So, you know, there's that, you know, the benefits, right? But not you know, what we're trying to do is limit the cost of that on the environment as much as possible. And, and I think, you know, educating folks on, you know, we've come a long way. We still have a long way to go. This is where the transparency comes in. Evan, I think, is a, a critical point of not just talking, but, you know, actually showing the progress that you're meeting those goals or exceeding that. 
And I think if, if we as a collective uh, can um, be more transparent, have a, you know, industry goals, industry, you know, education on what good looks like and, you know, what those targets should be, then I think it rises, you know, the entire collective up and, 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 and it's not just uh, noise and just placating, um, you know, the media or, or um, regulators and so forth. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Philip. Um, you know, we've been really trying to be transparent, uh, educate, but also we're defining um, and, uh, you know, what it what it really means to be greener and, and what are the implications? And then how do we measure this progress? What is, you know, even getting a, a baseline measurement uh, from uh, all countries um, across this great world um, and then trying to um, uh, put goals in place, uh, as you said, um, and, and work collaboratively and share ideas and technology. It is an undertaking. Um, and, and we're just, you know, and, and the folks that are rising to this high call of, you know, uh, such as iMasons, um, I think doing a terrific job talking about definitions and measurements. Um, so I also know, uh, as your friend, uh, that you are in iMason, um, and um, and they're also contributing to to the book as well. Um, uh, any any words there, um, in, in where you see sort of the industry heading forward, and uh, um, and and you know what what do you think we'll be talking about three years from now in terms of ESG? Yeah, look, um, you know, for those unfamiliar, you know, the infrastructure masons it has you know, four to five pillars that are core, right, to it, to its its philosophy, um, you know, uh, diversity, uh, more diversity into the industry, right, more education uh, into um, the industry, um, sustainability is a core pillar, right, and you can kind of see the kind of how they all play off each other, and, you know, members of that right are you know the biggest companies in this space and um you know we've we were a founding partner as well um and you know that's the premise is we get together and and it, it's not about the company it's about the bigger issues and how do we um solve for those things and you know look i i think sharing on the innovation um increased collaboration through whether it's the i masons and other organizations that are being built up, um, um, increased transparency um, are all all kind of um, essential um, to to achieve aggressive goals. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, and again, I, I you know, you read the news and you see what's happening. Uh, you know, you might have <laughs> you might have to move inland soon, Jamie. Right? Like you're on the coast there, so I don't know. Like uh, you know, oceanfront is is gonna be you're gonna have to get some stilts or whatever, right? <laughs> I know, it's, and get the real estate market. <laughs> yeah, it's scary, right? So, and I, I you know, that the, I think we've reached that awakening and that tipping point where I mean, it's it's scary, and you know, we, you know, look, I know you have not a newborn anymore, but it, you know, it, relative newborn and my kids are older and, and it's their future. Right. And you can't, you can't cut corners on that. And I think about my kids and my grandkids, um, you know, knock on wood one day and, and, you know, what's the world going to be like if we continue at this pace? So, um, you know, we, we have to take action now, plain and simple. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And then whether it's my personal, like you're driving an electric car and that's great. Um, and how do we, you know, what do we do in our personal lives to what do we do in our work lives and what do we do as companies and industries and all that kind of stuff? It's got to be a co-op, you know, cooperative and, and, and holistic uh, view and scope. I know that sounds like apple pie and, and all that goodness, but it, it's, it, we, it's, it's, it's absolutely a critical. We're at that point now where there's otherwise... Like I said, you're going to be on stilts pretty soon. <laughs> wow, deep thought. So let's move from really important big topics to completely trivial small topics now in our rapid fire series of questions. So well, some fun facts. Let, let's try to get some uh, some insight into your life behind the scenes. First question, 
what's your favorite hobby? And you're not allowed to say email or Slack. So it has to be a real hobby. Oh, no, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> well, you know, look, I always liked working out in the yard and, and you just kind of, you just get in and get your hands dirty and all that kind of stuff. But during, you know, uh, COVID, you know, my wife and I, we, we, we put the, the backyard garden in there and, and, and it's pretty cool. Take a seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, grow that thing, you plant it, and then you, you you end up seeing the little fruits of your labor, right? And and you start having all kinds of vegetables and and all that good stuff. And I grew all these hot peppers and stuff, and made my own hot sauce. And I was just like, you watch YouTube and look, it worked. And I was like, dang, this is I, I've got a I've got a backup. I've got a backup. <laughs> right? So that's uh, fantastic. Yeah, I, I grew a complete marijuana bush from a tiny seed. It was <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. It's not legal yet in Virginia, so uh, okay. Well, that, come up so. and visit. It's totally legal here. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, Marangella hot sauce. I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely uh, uh, um, something we could go, get on eBay pretty yeah. soon. <laughs> Got a ring to it. <laughs> yeah. um, favorite place you travel to, and a place that you're dreaming of traveling to. <sighs> Well, you know, it's funny because you either like these kind of these uh, uh, outdoor destinations or it's something very cultural, right? So, you know, you can do the Japan and you, you get all that where you just do the, the extreme outdoors. But there was one that kind of had both and that was Marfa, Texas, right? And I tell people that and they're like, what, what, what are you talking about, right? And so there's this little place in Eastern Texas. It's got it's it's it became this artist enclave this cultural artist enclave um and and so you go there and there's all these art installations it's amazing um you know and and it's in it the but the and it's actually at altitude it's almost like at 5000 feet so it's not like uber hot um as as like the rest of texas but you also have big bend national park and you're just like the scenery and the remoteness and the is awesome right so you wouldn't expect it and there's like awesome restaurants too right so fantastic food and just uh, it's it's like this foodie little place and you would never expect in far eastern texas on the border of mexico uh awesome super cool so that's where they had the prada store in the desert you know yeah that, that art went there yeah installation like, that looked really fun art is, it's, it's not a real store it's just uh <laughs> yeah but uh highly recommend it or maybe not i don't want people going there because <laughs> and crowded. all of us now who are who are no longer oceanfront we have to move inland yeah. somewhere, so that's pretty inland <laughs> yeah. yeah and where to go out of shoot there's too many places right um um you know I, there's there's just not enough time and too many places to go but i would love to do patagonia so that's that's on my bucket list awesome me yeah. too uh, yeah. So next question, if you could have coffee with one person in the world today, living person out there, who would it be and why? Excluding me, of course. Oh, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. I <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, you look over coffee. So it's short and sweet. You want, you want an interest. It's always about like you guys, right? It's an interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. So somebody like that has interesting stories to tell. I would love to talk to like Bono or, a Bansky, right? And just to hear their stories of what they've done and where they've been and people they've met and all that kind of stuff, just to get a little glimpse into that other side of the, of the, uh, you know, somebody's not in the office and just has a, you know, cool, cool uh, background and experiences that they've had in life. I think that'd be pretty cool. That is cool. All right. Last question. What's the first concert you ever attended? You, you said Bono was <laughs> me too, or? You know, I, I kick. I kick myself because look, I grew up in Southern Cal, right? In San Diego. And I missed out on the Joshua tree tour when they came to LA Coliseum. And, um, but I did see him like I was 20 years ago. I'm here in DC and, and went with a bunch of us now old people. And, and we had a party bus and we acted like we were young and, and, uh, they, they did the, you know, it was Joshua tree 2.0. So that was pretty cool. So made up for that missed opportunity, but, Again, San Diego, you know, reggae was big down there. Ziggy Marley, of all people, was like one of my first concerts as a as a teen that I went to by myself. So uh, um, and and you talked about some herbs before. There was a lot of that in the audience. So uh, <laughs> I was uh, sec a lot of secondhand smoke, I must say. <laughs> 
So. Well, good times, and we'll, we'll get back together again uh, at a concert soon, I hope, as uh, COVID gets behind us. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Philip, and yeah. great to see your leadership in action on on climate tech and, uh, you know, a greener future in the data center. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, good to see you too, Evan, and, and always uh, good to chat with you, uh, Jamie. Oh, Philip, thank you. Thank you for all you do for our industry, our planet, our people. We appreciate you. And guys, if you enjoyed today's Data Movers podcast as much as I did, be sure to check us out, jsa.net slash podcast, upcoming Data Movers episodes, also featuring some greener data authors such as Philip, releasing every other week, Wednesday mornings, as well as other JSA podcast series there. And as always, follow us on Twitter at jscotto and Evan Kerstell. And please keep staying safe, guys. And as always, happy networking.